Cat and Moose podcast. I'm Cat and I'm Moose. This is a true life podcast where we explore the quirks of being human. Hey, everyone. Here we are, everybody. Oh my gosh. It's like they went from like super pro to like mega pro. Mega. Like we, we have totally leveled up a notch. And at your request, Moose, um, you asked that I offer a prayer for this thing that we're getting into oh, yeah. today. Great. Yes, please. All right. Who Now, who am I praying to or with or us you're praying with us <laughs> as long as i'm not praying to you no oh, that no. would get weird okay. we have a buddha here oh, okay. we also have a bible for jesus uh-huh. um you're also wearing a shag nasty shirt yes you could be shag praying nasty, yes to to them. grandma shag to, nasty to my grandma davis yeah mm-hmm. absolutely okay i just needed a who little would bit you of- like to welcome into the room i would like to welcome all of our listeners into the room i would mm. like to welcome you producer sarah thank you and you moose and, and you cat. this beautiful and myself cat and this beautiful creature frankie who's in here with us mm-hmm. and i would just like to also welcome in um the divine mm. i would like to welcome in all that is good and light and I invite any of our listeners who are listening to welcome anyone who brings light and love and comfort to them into their space. And listeners, we would love for you to join us in our space. And our space has cars in the background. And the heat is on, and the fan is on, and all is good. We're right in advance of the spring solstice. By the time you're hearing this, spring will have sprung. And I just wanted to ask all of you and God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Mother, Mother, Mm -hmm. Durga, Buddha, Shag nasty. Uh, shag nasty. <laughs> the mean grandmas and the nice grandmas. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I would like to invite all of you to show your presence as you wish and ask that if there are any good vibes and any well wishes that you would be willing to send our way for our first ever podcast that is on video. And we are back in the room together. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We would love to just soak up all those good vibes and we would like to be like a mirror and shine them right back on you in even greater glory than before. So thank you for being with us and welcome to episode 198 of the Cat and Moose podcast where we have completely leveled up. Oh, hell yes. We have transformed. We keep talking about these butterflies and their cocoons. Cocoons. <laughs> their cocoons. Cocoons. Those butterflies wearing they their They went to Cancun. I thought you said cocoons and I was so confused. <laughs> those oh those Cancun butterflies. What did you think she said? I I thought it was a word that is it's not really a, not it, an okay word. Cocoons. Oh. That's what I said. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did. And say I that. didn't mean to. Wow. Yeah. Cocoon. <laughs> Cocoons from Cancun. So the Cancun butterflies. <laughs> we're try basically what we're getting at being a science podcast is that we're we're starting to fly and yeah. we're 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 at the phase. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we're flying. We are flying. Not oh yet. My gosh, it's, okay. We're getting ready. Yes. We're well, at the are we? F- I mean, <laughs> we might be. Guys. All right. We're sorry. at the phase where, what is it before the butterfly? What is that thing called? Metamorphosis. Called a caterpillar. A caterpillar. <laughs> Metamorphosis. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about the animal. The Christians the, talk okay, about it all the totally time just in our twenties. Simplified what the three of us bring to the, to the podcast because <laughs> we each had a different word for the same thing. Agreed. Like, yeah. But the caterpillar—that is what I was looking for. Yes. Um, you know, I'm guessing when it starts melting before it turns into the butterfly, that it's having panic attacks and like, Oh, I'm oh, dying. Like I'm dying. Flashes. Yeah. Oh, That's wow. what we've been through the past year. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now we're at the phase where we're like, 
oh shit, I've got wings. What do I do with this? Oh. That's her wheel. Oh, that feels so good in my body. Isn't that great? Like that I literally like could feel myself like Yeah. Yeah, like we're gonna practice. Kid. Like those birds that just stand with their wings open and they're like oh. Come at, up space. Come at me. Come at me. Yes. So, good. so we're practicing flying today. Yes. Welcome to flight lesson number one. Flying lessons. Yeah. I think. I, what I'm curious about, and, and I think I have an answer for this, but I'm curious, like, who is the flight instructor? Do we, like, know how to fly? I mean, we just got these wings, so we don't know anything. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I think it's in us. Like, yeah, birds don't like, know. It's like the divine inside of us. Like, yeah. it's intuition or instinctual. Yeah, okay. I agree with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'm into it. Ah! It's so fun. I see. Into it. <laughs> oh, intuition. <laughs> yes. It's so fun to record in the same room together. It really is. Like, looking... In your eye. No, I'm being serious. Can I be serious? Yes, I know it's uncomfortable. But there's 12 different <laughs> tripods yeah, if you between could only us see. Now. And then if I take my glasses off, there's 24. Oh, so wow. that's God, bad. help us. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it is really nice to be doing this, this really fun thing that we've been doing together now for years. Yes, like yeah, years. years. Uh, Hey, Moose. Hey, Kat. (laughs) Hey, Sarah. Hi. Hi. (laughs) It's really nice to be doing this thing that we've been doing for years together back in person again. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we're doing it not just because like, oh, hey, girl, hey, like we want to be in person. But Moose and Sarah have both just really said, hey, we're going to level this thing up. And we have got mics and we've got cameras and we've got lights. Cameras? Cameras. Cameras. Oh, yeah. And cameras then, from Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say how lovely it is, Moose, to actually look you in the eyes. It's still, I only laugh. I agree. I agree. But there is... I don't know why my light is right down your face. There's yeah. some things, some there's some adjustments. We we're out. learning how to fly. We're but, learning. Yeah. Oh, that's better. But, but we're then not. There's no mic. Yeah. yeah. But then Sarah's like, I said, stand <laughs> hey, get back on your mic. Yeah. yeah. Sarah, I would like to look at your eyeballs. Hi. It is really nice to see you in person. It's so good to see you in person Thank for you. this, especially. Yeah, this is this is really lovely. And I love like like I'm what I'm seeing right now is all this cool shit going on on Sarah's screen that's all of our like voice waves and stuff. It yep. looks really I want to see here's what Can it looks like. Show oh you're gonna oh, show ooh, yeah. voice waves. Nice. Voice waves. Voice waves. We also They're like energy. Here are voice waves for you, Moose. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. We are high tech. We are high tech. We just, uh, Uh, we also also have the windows open. So Sarah's upset about the windows being open. (laughs) I am so happy about the windows being open. (laughs) Basically these lights that we're trying out are frying our skin right now. So (laughs) we needed to cool off a little, but people Mm -hmm. are walking by like, oh, that must be an award-winning podcast. podcast. Oh, it totally yeah. is. <laughs> you know that's what they're thinking. <laughs> it is. Hey. If you guys need autographs, let us know. <laughs> the silence is deafening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so talking about autographs, um, we all work in the music industry, and so we grew up and had lots of different experiences with experiencing live music and meeting famous people and becoming famous people and like all kinds of stuff. And, um, so at least for me, I've gotten a little bit desensitized to like the special, yeah, mm-hmm. like the, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, it's really special to have someone's autograph mm-hmm. who you admire. And if they look you in the eye, before they sign your autograph, like I see you like that means everything. Yeah. Like I remember when I met Sarah McLaughlin for the first time and she just really like, she was there with me, at least made me feel that way, Mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, working with clients who get to interact with fans like that all the time is really fun. And like I said, can sometimes kind of desensitize like, Oh, like what, our actual clients do and who they are is really, really special. And so, um, you remember from a couple of episodes ago, um, I went to St. Louis with one of our clients and, um, I forgot to mention one thing about that trip and it is our dear friend that we've all known for years, Mike, who gave me the diet Coke. 
Oh, yeah. He Mm. saved my life. Hmm. Well, yeah, Diet Cokes do sometimes. Yeah. And so, Mike, I want your autograph. Um, And (laughs) I just wanted to say thank you for the Diet Coke. And I wanted you guys to get to experience with me a moment that made me feel really special. And um, our jobs, all of our jobs, everybody listening, each one of us in this conversation, um, our jobs are really important. And our jobs are also like not as important as the next job or whatever. And I think a lot of our jobs oftentimes feel thankless. Mm. Yeah. You Mm -hmm. know, Mm -hmm. and um, it's not that my clients don't thank me. It's not that you guys or our constituents don't thank me, but sometimes it just feels, yeah, sometimes it just feels like, oh man, this feels kind of like a thankless job. And I had this very unexpected moment in St. Louis where our client um, closed out his show with my favorite song. I don't know if it's my very favorite, but it's one of my favorite songs he's ever written Um, and gave me a little shout out. And so I just wanted to share it with you. I love it. I remember you mentioning this, but I want to hear what he said. Um, I want to I want to dedicate this song. My manager Kat Davis is here. She she normally never gets to travel with me because she's too busy uh, doing the podcast. The world in <laughs> she came all the way and has just been hanging out all day at the radio station with me with everyone and back at the merch table. So could you give Kat a round of applause? Aww, that's so that's sweet. sweet. We've been I working together that. for almost twenty years. So that's crazy. It's nuts. And, uh, uh, yeah, this is this for her. So sweet. Isn't that the sweetest? I love it. it is so sweet. I mean, how does that feel? Oh, like my whole chest is just like, I've, I've been, I've been taught that when cats purr, the, some of the cells in their chest, like they swell mm-hmm. and they bump against each other. And that's what makes the purr. <gasps> that's cool. Sound. And I feel like that in my chest. Uh, I feel like. That's very appropriate like, for your name, even. Ooh. <laughs> All the it metaphors. made you purr. Yeah. Made me purr. That's I think sweet. That is really sweet. Really Thanks. sweet. Thanks for sharing it with me. I, I can't believe you guys have been working together almost 20 years. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I remember the day you came home and said you were going to work with them. And I was like, who's that? And you were like. <laughs> he's going to be somebody I'm going to show, you know, like you were like yeah. ready to build it. You yeah. did. You guys yeah. built it together. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. been a really, a really fun adventure. And, um, continues if you don't to know be- her artist, it's Richard Marks in case you're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and the piano. Oh, so so nice. I figured you heard that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is not. It's not Richard Marks. His name is Matt Marr and he is one of the greatest artists and songwriters of all time. In my yeah. opinion. He's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with me. Now it's Women's History Month. Wait, no. <clears throat> Wait, you shared that with us. <laughs> and we shared with you. No, she was saying we shared Thank the moment. Thank you for sharing the moment. <laughs> oh, okay. With okay, got me. it. <laughs> so I was like, Wait, by the way, and I, I, want, I mean, no disrespect by the statement, but today Sarah looked at me and she goes, I'm autistic. I I am. And I said to her, I love your autism. Yes, as do I. Thank you. I know many people with varying degrees of autism and like the more, the better. I agree. (laughs) I love it. Completely agree. I love your quirks. Thank you. I'm full of them. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. uh, Wait, I want to say something. We're on the honoring cat train oh yeah it's been a little long so let's i know i know but um sarah would you be willing to show cat the video um that i found that you being a left-handed lefty oh i thought you would appreciate this there's a store for lefties oh god it's okay go ahead say it again there's a store for there's a store for there's a store for lefties that's all are you going to play it? Yeah. Okay. I just thought you were going to set it up. <laughs> that was hey, the we have it. <laughs> we watched the video and then we respond. I was going to try and share my Zoom. We're not on Zoom. You ready? It's okay. <laughs> old, old habits die hard. One day at a time. One degree of change at a time. It's Zoom. okay. Okay. <laughs> Here it comes, guys. We brought a lefty to the lefty store. So you feel right at home. A measuring tape for left-handed people. Oh, my God. 
The difference is the clip is on this side. The left hand clip oh, is on Lord. this side. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, usually the mugs are the right. other way around with the image. Yep. Yep. This, this is side. also my experience. So you get to hold it, hold it up? God, what's hand? that oh, like? Oh, okay. Okay. See, it's so confusing because all I know is right-handed ones. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Me right too, dude. To do it. Oh my god. Be like. It's a can opener. Oh, there it is. I don't know what the difference is with this one. <laughs> oh. Oh, the portfolio. The pad is on the. The, pad is on the, the left. For the oh, love of God. That's yes. This would have been helpful the other day. I need to. Get, where is this place? <laughs> it wasn't is this me. Sarah? It wasn't my fault. Um, in San Francisco. Of course it is. A measuring cup for left-handers. I guess it's just the image. But I don't understand that. Could you just turn it around? You can, but like the measuring cup that I have, like on on the side, if I'm holding it with my right hand, it's got all the like the cup and the all this. And if I'm holding it with my left hand, it's like kilograms and milligrams and stuff like that. Which, being an American, I don't. Yeah. yeah have as when I'm cutting similar with scissors, I can't knowledge, see. dude. That's you don't have to wonderful. watch it anymore. But I, so then I went down a hole of like, are there lefty stores other places? Yeah. Amazon has a lefty store. What? Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. My goodness. So for other fellow lefties, mm -hmm. there you go. That is very exciting. It is exciting. That is very exciting. Thank you. I um, want to share something. Okay. Oh, wait. Do you have more to share about the lefties? No, I have other things to share, but it's your turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> share, share and tell. We're a show and tell and podcast. And show and tell. <laughs> What would okay. you like to share with us? Well, I, we don't have to watch this whole video, but I do think it's pretty cool. This is about a tree shrew, <laughs> and it's the only animal that has its own toilet in the wild. What? Every morning, the tree shrew's first activity is using the toilet. It's the only animal that has its own toilet. It poops into the mouth of a pitcher plant. This plant doesn't get angry. Instead, it provides the shrew a snack. <laughs> Every morning, the pitcher plant opens the toilet lid to greet the little tree shrew. As to the little tree shrew, the first thing it does when it wakes up is look for the pitcher plant. The reason for their close relationship is because they have a special partnership. The lids of the pitcher plant's toilet secrete a sweet nectar every day, which wow. happens to be the tree shrew's favorite dessert and its primary source of sustenance. <laughs> After the tree shrew has licked all the toilet lids clean, <laughs> it also leaves a carefully prepared gift for the pitcher plant. <laughs> Although this gift may seem a bit peculiar, it's the pitcher plant's favorite food. In the continuous rain of Borneo's tropical rainforest, the gift left by the tree shrew is washed into the pitcher plant's stomach by rainwater. With nitrates from the feces, the pitcher plant wow. can survive. <laughs> That's all. I mean, like, <laughs> wow. Like, I know. Nature is so fascinating. It really it is. Fascinating. It really and is. What's even more fascinating is, like, that happened for... Probably millions of years. Yeah. And yet this guy thought, why has no one made a video about it? Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Like he was a biologist that went, someone needs to know that yep. this thing poops in a plant. Yeah. I mean, what a discovery too. You're what? like, what is that? Oh, did you hear my, my chair? No, it sounded like you, <laughs> you sounded like, like a tree shrew. <laughs> Sorry. Whoops. <laughs> I really, um, I, I love that you, that you brought that Sarah. It really <laughs> reminds me how like that whole idea of like for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Yeah. And the whole idea of like the balance of nature. And it's like, what a, what a beautiful way to showcase that by this animal shitting in a flower, yeah. the flower makes food for it that it right. likes. Yes. Like right, that's it being in the like river. A toilet that is being in the river. What did our friends call it the other day? It was a, uh, some sort of. I didn't know we had not friends. a transaction. It was a. Oh, I can't remember. Never mind. Transaction. It's not a transaction. It's like a when you're having a conversation or when you're interacting oh. with people. There's a give oh. and a take. But they they had a cool phrase for it. Yeah, it was Catch like and a release. Catch and release. It's like that. Was it? That? It was similar. Oh. It was, it was very similar to guys, that. Guys, really? we, we'll, we'll report back. Guys, new friends. You know that there are people in. screaming at their windshields well, right now. it's like <sighs> a student, it's like a teacher counseling thing that they say when it's actually give and take, it's called blank. Blam. And blam. Symbiotic relationship. Mm-hmm. 
Anyway, what were we talking about? Well, I want to talk about monoliths. Do you remember oh. Oh, back yes. in 2020 yeah. when we were doing monoliths? Oh, that was yeah. in 2020? It feels wow. like it was. Maybe it was sooner. Well, there's a new one back. Okay. Um, Sarah, can you read that? Because Lord knows I can't. Okay. It says, Mystery Steel Monolith appears in Wales. When Craig Muir left his house in Hay on Wye in Powys, Wales. <laughs> she just, <laughs> she just have a stroke. <laughs> like, what just happened? Hay on Wye? What's it? <laughs> yeah. That's the word of, that's what it says. How, how do you spell it? H-A-Y dash O-N dash W-Y-E. Wow. It, it literally sounded like she was speaking you, another language. I thought you literally switched in like to like Norwegian. Okay, uh, in Hay on Wye and Powys, Wales, on March twelfth, to take oh, it. Okay, so in Wales, we are in the UK. We're in the UK, okay, guys. I We're in the UK. She the animal. <laughs> Okay. I'm like, am I Jonah? Like, I don't know what's no, happening. No, no, no. Okay, so these, uh, this guy was taking his usual walk. He noticed something strange. At first, he thought it might be something scientific. Uh, some, sorry, at the first. Bleh. At first, he you thought. Got this. You got this. <laughs> I you have got it. this. I, I think third hey, time are we chart. recording? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are, we are. Okay, ready? At first, he thought it might be some scientific device to collect rainwater, but upon closer inspection, God bless it. I bet the next word's inspection. Upon closer inspection, he realized it was anything but that. The ten-foot-tall steel monolith looked like it had been dropped out from, dropped down from space. Muir said. He added, "If you didn't know anything, if you didn't know anything to look at it, you could have easily thought it had been dropped off by a UFO or for, or something." Of course it was. Muir said that there is no way to drive to the location of the monolith and surmised that it may have been transported via helicopter. There were no obvious tracks around it, and one could think that something... Hang... Wait, wait, I'm sorry. ...like that would cause a lot of a mess, he added. I'm almost done. This monolith, monolith in Wales is the latest to appear, with several similar ones having popped up across the globe in the late in late 2020. The unique metal structures were placed in Utah, California, Romania, and Turkey, with seemingly no explanation. Do you mm. want to see the video, mm-hmm. or do you want to ask your question? Uh, I'll see the video. Can I'm video? still oh. responding from you setting a boundary with me. And oh, it's taking me <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wow. Are okay. you doing okay? I'm doing all right. Okay, good. Thank you. We're watching the video. Okay. I'm sorry for... Okay, here we go. It's a baffling story out of Wales. A mysterious steel monolith has appeared seemingly out of nowhere, leaving locals scratching their heads. The towering structure, nearly the size of a semi-truck, was discovered by a witness who stumbled upon it while out Is for a metal? run does on a hill metal? in High it does on to me. He described it as bizarre and definitely stainless steel. Another witness okay. said he initially okay, mistook so it for a UFO. To say. Are you glad we watched the video? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like 13 uh, angles of the same. So stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Here, oh, here, this is like, this is how I feel right okay. now. Because okay. that's, I'm sure, what you're looking for is how I, I feel. Of course. Um, that's why we're here. Someone has gone to Home Depot and has bought three sheets of sheet metal okay and gone hiking out in wales Mm -hmm. and stuck that shit in the ground that looked a little bit nicer than some sheet metal saying that it's dropped off by a ufo like why do we why does anybody believe this Hmm. well i wouldn't have brought it to the show if i didn't oh gosh i believe it you think it came from outer no i think it came from a helicopter but oh what I, just to I just, just cause. Do you even know what a monolith is? Did they debunk it in like, 2020? What the hell? Is it a piece of metal? Like a, it's a monument that it, is a lift. Like a, I view it to me. I view it as a statue. It's like a. It's like a. But what's the point? Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, a monolith is a large, single, upright block of stone, especially one shaped into or serving as a pillar or monument. Of what? What are they? Any kind of monument. So like like, like the. Like this, this face guy. Oh, that's a monolith. I, like I can, it's a rock that looks like a face. That's a monolith. I know the answer to oh, the question. Cat knows. I know the answer to the question. The okay. answer to the question is, is where did it come from? 
go back to that Instagram article and just start at the beginning. <laughs> really? We have lost all of our listeners. <laughs> Dropped off by a UFO? No, no, no. At the very, very beginning. Mystery steel monolith appears in Wales. And then that next line. When Greg Muir left his house in Hay on Wye in Powys, Wales, on March 12th to take his hey usual on walk. That's where it came from. That's, oh, hey that on was really funny. It is funny. Very funny. It is funny because we thought she had a stroke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, yeah. That, that's all, guys. I just <laughs> wanted to share that. I'm- Okay. I feel like, did I hurt your No, feelings? not at all. But are you okay with her setting a boundary? Yeah, yeah. I'm still a little tingly, but it's it happens to me all what the time. What happened? Did I point my finger at you? No. no. When I did this? It was a little bit like a, hang on, I'm almost done. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I am so interested in what happens in my body when people set boundaries. It is really, do you, you feel hungry? Do you want to share about it? Wait, hunger? <laughs> Sometimes emotion can cause <laughs> pangs of hunger. That's true. I, I yeah. believe it. I'm an I emotional do. eater. Yeah. Oh. oh, I wasn't saying you are. I'm just was curious. How about I keep it more open ended? How do you feel? <laughs> yeah, what does it do in your body? Maybe I won't guess your feelings. <laughs> How, do you want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's funnier me not talking. <laughs> not true at all. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to go back if you're willing. Yes. Like I would like to go back to um, in that moment when I was like, this is bullshit. This is a bunch of shit from Home Depot or whatever. I'm like, who believes this? And you're like, I do. What, a, what about it? Do you be, like when you say you believe it, like what about the whole phenomena? Do you believe? First of all, I think it's very odd. Yes. Like, I, my guess is it's like art students hmm. dropping off shit, you know, but mm. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's interesting that people would choose to do it. Even if it's not a, U- I don't think it's a UFO necessarily, but mm. I do think UFOs are real. Oh yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Of course. But Have you like dug into any of the Dr. Pasolka stuff that I've mentioned as of late? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> Not a clue. <laughs> Sorry. I, it, did we talk about it? Did I you thought, send us I something that we didn't did. open? I think our listeners are truth tellers. Have yeah. we talked about Dr. Pasaka? <laughs> Sasaka. Sasaka. Slavaka. Yeah, Tell name, us about her. Her name her. is, is Dr. Oh, it's she, of course it's a she. Uh, yeah, Great. she's amazing. Her name is Dr. Diana Pasolka. Um, and she is a um, professor in North Carolina. Right. Mm-hmm. And she has written a couple of books and they address some of these things. monoliths. Hmm. Yeah. But more broadly, like, you know, kind of quantum physics meets, oh. are there UFOs meet spirituality and, you know, kind of faith lens through which like, it's just really, really interesting reading. I mean, I've been listening of course, cause I don't read, but right. Mm, nor yeah. should we. I just think that you would find her material really cool, Miss. I will look her up. Kawasaki. If you could send the spelling, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Kawasaki. 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 <laughs> um, I am interested in quantum physics. I had this moment with my therapist this week where I was um, telling her that there are a few things in my life where I have had intense emotions around things because... I knew later in life I would experience something hard, but I knew what it was. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. And I won't go into the specifics, but as an example, if I knew I say that I knew I was going to have a car wreck, like I was triggered before anything ever happened is what I'm getting at. Hmm. Anyway. And I was telling my therapist, I was like, I think that's where quantum physics comes into play is like, if you really do believe that our souls are like, in different places at different times and it's not all just linear, then it makes sense that my soul would already know that this pain is coming. Uh One of them was Mm. when I was like 12 years old, I think I've told the story before, but I had my first panic attack because my mom was turning 50 Mm -hmm. and I thought that was really old. And after I've processed so much grief with her passing, I think that that 12 year old me knew even then 
oh, life is going to be really hard without mm-hmm. her around, mm-hmm. even though it was mm-hmm. many years later mm-hmm. that she did pass. Mm-hmm. Um, but is that quantum physics or is that just our soul being all knowing? I mean, I think, first of all, I don't think any of us can know yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I think the answer is yes. I, I think mm-hmm. that it's yes and. Mm-hmm. And um, there's this new thing that I, I saw um, called Wondrium. Have you heard of this thing? Mm-mm. No. Um, it's like a, a channel you can subscribe to, like on your Apple TV or whatever. And and it's all these collections of like dissertations, teachings, classes about all kinds of subjects. Like oh, wow. where did the human language begin? Like quantum physics. So I'm in the middle of watching the quantum physics wow, one. That's cool. Um, and it's taught by it's taught by this professor. I think she's up in Boston. Um, and it's just fascinating. And one of the things that I, I really enjoyed was she was talking about dual wave something or other part dual wave particles. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what they did is they showed a can, like a soda can Mm -hmm. and they had a light who that shone on the can, like from above the can. And so below the can, it looked like a square Hmm. on the Hmm. wall. Mm Mm-hmm. They shone a light from beside the can and what showed up on the wall was a circle. Mm, That's weird. But it's the same object. Yeah. Right. That's a good explanation of kind of how quantum physics works. It's like, yes, and it's like, I still don't understand what it's, (laughs) it's this and that they're both. Oh, something that is, that is a thing can also behave like another thing and can also behave like another thing, but then it is still the thing. Right. Still the same thing. You know? And Mm so, I I mean, I just think it's fascinating. It is fascinating. What if you were a quantum physicist in another life or just a physicist? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be a physicist, I can't even say that word. (laughs) If you're going to be a physicist, Mm -hmm. you might as well be a quantum one. You might as well be a quantum one. Yeah. What does quantum mean? Did you watch the show Quantum Leap? Oh, I never hell did. yeah. You I did. never did. You didn't? In the 80s. And then it's back. Oh, yeah? With new people now. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it either. I, I never watched oh, it. Oh, you would have loved it. I probably would have. You should watch it. Maybe I'll watch the reruns. What watch does the new ones. Mean, Sarah? Uh, in physics, it means a discrete quantity of energy proportional in magnitude to the frequency of the radiation it shut represents. Down. Already, sh- <laughs> like three words in, I shut down. Can well, you like ask Siri to make that more clear or something? Ask Chat GBT. <laughs> yeah, ask Chat GBT. Explain quantum physics to a layman <laughs> or a lay woman or a lay anyone. The GoPro just shut off. Oh. <laughs> like there's an alien there's an alien uh okay quantum physics is a branch of physics that deal with the behavior of very small particles such as atoms and subatomic particles like electrons and protons at its core quantum physics reveals a bizarre and fascinating world that operates very differently from the familiar rules of classical physics that govern our everyday experiences and don't we want that yeah don't we want a little different for sure. And I, I do believe, I mean, one of my, I'm going to start saying life verses because that's what the Christians say, Great. but it's not a verse. <laughs> that's fine. It's like a poetry verse. Okay. But, um, phrases is eventually everything connects. Oh yeah. And you said that forever. leans into some quantum physics there is like a hundred percent. I believe very strongly that we are connected to other people. And so it makes sense that I could have some sort of connection with someone that's completely across the world. Eventually, everything connects. Everything connects. Okay, so do you know what it's called when, um, like the Sonos speakers, Mm -hmm. S-O-N-O-S, you can spell it backwards and forwards. You can even flip it vertically and it still says Sonos. Uh Mm. So I'm wondering if, if eventually everything connects is one of those things. Everything connects eventually. Mm. Mm. Connects everything eventually. I don't know. It's just kind of neat. It I seems see like, what you're saying. Yeah. It's like, could it also be hmm. a particle? I just saw that. That's cool. I saw it. Uh, so one of the things we do in coaching um, that is like a visualization for folks when they can't figure out... Like they feel stuck. Mm-hmm. 
which we all do, right? To some degree. Often. Um, <clears throat> so, Kat, I thought it would be fun to see if you would be willing to do this little thing called the ideal day. Yeah, I would love to. I will do anything once, oh. especially if you ask me. You know wow. that. That reminds me, my doctor once told me I'll do anything twice. Oh, wow. And that made me go, oh, <laughs> just like you guys did. <laughs> okay. Seriously. Oh. Commence. Um, okay, so I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think about you have an entire day where you get to do anything you possibly could want to do. You don't have to work. You don't have to play. There's no rules. You wake up and what is the first thing that you want to do or choose to do? probably go pee okay mm. and after you pee what would you like to do i would like to um pet my beautiful dog bell bell and i would like to get some coffee and put some half and half and equal in it and to drink it and not feel like i want to barf mm. like i'd love to just really savor the taste of that and if I were to, to have, like, really my most bougie day, I would love to have one of those little things that, like, mm. frost up the, the half Sure. Half. Yeah. You get to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do that. And then after your coffee, where are you having your coffee? Um, in my red chair in the living room. Okay. <laughs> Is the sun up? I yes. Sarah's. Mmm. Mm. And do I, I get to do like whatever I want? You get to do whatever you want. I know this is a speed round of this, but oh, keep it is. going. Okay. It's no, well, if, if, if you're asking me, it's not going to be a speed no, round. No, I'm you, just you know saying better. like normally we could do this over 30 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. and we only have two hours. So take your time <laughs> and um, I, I would have this rotating cast of characters. Oh, fun. That would visit with me. Mm. They're the just morning. going to come and. Okay, tell but there's us about but that. there's no there's no like um, there's no need for like the pleasantries and and yeah. all that. For example, like I would look up and you would be sitting there. And, and what would we do together? Um, you would challenge me about. You would ask me questions. You would <laughs> do like challenge? you're doing now. But I mean, like you would you, <clears throat> you would be like, okay, like I've been thinking about the podcast. So what's the next thing? Blah blah blah. And we talk about it a little bit, and then it's like I would look down, take another sip, and then lift my eyes, and there would be my mom. Oh, cool! In there, and then it. But but it's just brief. It's it's not like we have this long drawn totally. out like mm. you mm -hmm. know. Do you want to stay for breakfast? Do you want to? You know, it's just very. Um. Yeah, just like kind of a rotating cast. Like I would really enjoy that. Like just easy, easy. How long would you like for that time to last? Probably about. Mm, well, I'd like to, for segment one to happen for about 20 minutes mm -hmm. and then I'd like to poop. Oh, and then wow. I would wow. like segment one to be just like another five minutes and then I, I want to move on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm. what do you want to do with your day? Um, You get to do anything and n no one is dependent upon you. Yeah. I think that um, that kind of time, like early like kind of mid morning ish, I would really love to check in with my client, Matt. Mm -hmm. And I would love to have a conversation. That's very, um, you know, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what's going on today. Let's check in on these few items. I need this from you. I need that from you. I love working with you. Like we'll check in later this afternoon. Yeah. Like I would feel really good. I love my job. I yeah. love what I get to do. Totally. Um, and then I would go, brush my teeth and clean up for the day and take a shower if I needed to, like whatever it is. And then, um, I would spend some time in a little bit of like prayer and meditation in my treatment room. Oh, cool. And, um, I would be doing that in advance of a client coming for body work. Oh, fun. Cool. Yeah. 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 And then the client would come, we would have a lovely session. Um, I would take my notes after the session because in my ideal day, I would actually take notes mm -hmm. regularly. Um, probably just lost my license. Um, <laughs> don't turn um, her in guys. Yeah. Don't turn me in. 
Um, so yeah, is, do you want me to keep going or is this, is this, have I kind of answered the, well, I'm just curious. Um, yes, I, I, I would like for you to keep going. Um, what happens in the evening in the evening? Yeah. Um, kind of a very similar thing, <clears throat> kind of a very similar thing to in the morning over coffee. There's like happy hour and there's oh, like, cool. there's like, again, three visitors, mm-hmm. very like short, but like easy, lovely, um, hang and, um, and then I would have dinner at home. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I would have dinner at home. So does that ideal day reflect your current life? There are elements of it that really do. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's incredible. That's what I saw in your ideal day. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. a lot of it's like there. That's amazing. Yeah. I think it's incredible when you do that, that exercise that, um, you can immediately, or I can in my body. I'm curious if you did. I feel this. Oh no. What do I, what should I do? Hmm. Who does anyone need me? Hmm. Like I, I feel those tugs when mm-hmm. I'm like actually mm-hmm. doing that. And I'm like, okay, no mm-hmm. ideal day. I'm, I'm on my own. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's fun that yours included like solitude, but also people. Hmm. Well, and, and I, I, I think that like, I can't, if I'm being honest with myself, like there has to be a part of me that enjoys being needed that enjoys being relied upon. And so I, I think that that kind of brief, like the revolving door interaction, I would like that to feel in real life, really balanced like that. I would Mm. like for it to feel like what you need from me is what I have. Mm -hmm. And what I need from you is what I have. Yeah. Mm. And then it's just fine. Can you explain that? What you need from me is what I have. What does that mean to you? Like, like, and I'll just use you and me as an example. Like if you were to just be like transported to sitting on my couch, like if you were like, God, I'm so frustrated about blah, 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 blah. And you like needed my support Mm -hmm. that I would just have the energy for that. Mm -hmm. Right. I see. Mm -hmm. You know, and that if I needed your support, you would have the energy for that. But it wasn't this like, you know, it's like, it's, it's just like, it's just flow. It's in the river, you know, it's like that, that to me. Um, and I think the only way I know how to, in, in this conscious mind to articulate that is these like kind of brief Mm -hmm. interactions. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the like, well, you know, so-and-so is coming over. I have to clean up. You know, it's just like this afternoon, like you guys were like, you're the only person or one of the Mm -hmm. only people that, you know, we can have our house a mess and not feel terrible, you know? And it's like, I just fuck like, right. Mm -hmm. I want that. It's exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. So like, okay. So I, I love everything you shared. Let me say that first. Um, before I move on and I'm not necessarily moving on, but I'm going to say this. I had this moment in the car this week where I was thinking about creative endeavors and how so many times, and this may not just be creative endeavors. That's just what I was thinking about. But so many times when we feel paralyzed, it is because we have gone outward Hmm. and thinking, what will other people think? Hmm. Like for instance, how many people want to write a book, want to be a painter, want to, be a podcaster or a content creator or an artist. And you are like in that flow when you're doing it, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, Mm -hmm. when you and I have talked about, we want to learn to edit. We want to keep, you know, we want Sarah Mm -hmm. to teach us all those things. And like, we want to keep going deeper, but it's funny once you start creating and then it's time to put it out in the world, all of a sudden we get paralyzed Mm -hmm. and we're like, I don't know. It's not good enough. Or what will people think? Mm -hmm. And I think that in general, I beyond creative endeavors that may paralyze us Hmm. is like when I feel frozen, it's, Mm -hmm. it's almost always because I have thought, what are people going to think about me? Mm -hmm. Even when I get anxiety, I had that Mm -hmm. realization is like, Oh, if I'm just me Mm. in here and expressing that by Mm -hmm. walking into the world, I'm okay with that. But Mm -hmm. the minute I think, how am I going to be perceived? Yeah. 
How do we change that? I don't know. I mean, I was thinking the other day I had to, I had to walk with a client up a really steep hill. Yes. Oh God. And, and I like, no. I, like it was fine. Mm. I was able to do it fine. My foot was killing me. I was out of breath and I was worried if this person thinks I'm unable to get up this hill, I might be unable to help steward their career. <laughs> you know, but isn't that real. the craziest shit ever though? Like, and it may- here's what you just said. Let me say it back to you. If I can't get up this hill without breathing heavy, I am not worth shit to <laughs> anyone. <laughs> but that's where we go. Right. Yeah. Right. I know. And it's like, I was feeling. like, this is the end of my career. Like this is yeah. just it. Uh-huh. And, and and it's just like why like why do we do that? And then he was probably out of breath too a little mm-hmm. bit. He yeah. or she, yeah, they. they <laughs> I I honestly, I mean, I, this is if my soul was given another chance to come to this lifetime, it was I'm pretty sure to learn how to not give a shit about what people think. Hmm. Yeah, which I was born with that gene, and then I lost it. You know, like we all are. Mm -hmm. Do you remember where you lost it? Oh, I can tell you 40 different places I lost it. But (laughs) it's the, you know, I mean, it's, we are born to come into this world, like going, this is amazing. Look at all this. And every little heartbreak just makes us smaller and more constrained. Nope. More. What is that word? Restrained. Constrained. We're st- both feel great. Yeah. Great. Um, but we get smaller and smaller mm-hmm. ultimately. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how do we undo that now mm-hmm. where we go? I don't know, man. I, I think it's, I think it's doing a lot of like what you just led me through. Yeah. You know? And it's like, where is that in, in not in a shameful sort of way, but mm-hmm. it's like, where is that inconsistent with your current life? Right. And what, what do we do about it? Right. And something that you, and this is just, uh, I'm putting things on you, like our favorite thing to do, um, is that like, you're doing something about it. Like mm. you were like, we're going to record this. We're going to video it. We're going to have lights. We're going to have, you know, we're going to be in the same room. And it's like, you're doing something about it. Mm, that's good. Right. And, here. and right. it's like, I would really, really love for you and for anybody listening to go like that one step toward doing something more toward your ideal day. Go mm. you. Like, totally. Yeah, right. Right. I mean, you're right. And it always is that one step. Yeah. I mean, I was talking with a group of coaches and they were talking about leading people through ideal day and how powerful it is. And I think it's powerful as well. But even this lady said, you know, I had a client who, woke up at six 30 instead of eight o'clock and that small change in her ideal day made her day so much better. And so she changed mm. that. Huh. And next thing you know, she started a new business cause she spent that hour and a half that morning wow. Wow. building this idea, you know? Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. yes, one tiny change can make such a difference and it is such a great tool to be able to go, what is incongruent with what my life looks like now? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Incongruent is a beautiful word, as is congruent. Congruent. Gosh. And constraint. And <laughs> restraint. <laughs> Let's have a Latin podcast. We're a Latin podcast. Kat, tell us about the song that you're going to play here at the end. And shall we sing along? Um, is this the Young the Giant yeah. song? I I heard this song when I was um, painting. I've got the Da Vinci's... Um, Vituran man. Yes. Yeah. The um, naked guy. Yeah. Yeah. But I have made some adjustments, um, <laughs> to make them neutral, gender neutral. I love it. Yeah. And, um, Oh, she's kind of yeah. giving you like yeah. a bad oh, it's so good. I feel like I'm on the radio again, Sarah. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Anyway. Um, when I was designing this thing for my wall, this song came on like on a Spotify, like radio thing. And I was like, what the hell? And it describes all the beautiful quantum physics things we've discussed. I don't believe in fate, no psychic vision. But when 
Podcast.com. Cat and Moose is a BP production.